With peer relationships, basically, we make judgments about ourself in comparison to others. So am I smart? Am I athletic? That's going to be based, at least in part, on how you see yourself compared to other people. Obviously, good peer relationships are going to uh, result in good things happening to you in your life. If you're rejected or you're aggressive with your peer relationships, it can develop into issues later on down the road. So this is where you want to try to uh, make sure that your kids has good peer relationships here so that they end up, you know, having good peer relationships in high school, in college, at work, all these different places. Parents can influence this. So, for example, moms can teach girls about relational aggression, for example, um, especially right now, considering how important things like social media and bullying and bullying just doesn't happen when you're at school anymore. You know, like when I was a kid, you'd go to school, maybe you'd get bullied, maybe you wouldn't, but at least it would end at the end of the school day. But now because of social media, bullying is a 24 hours, seven days a week thing. Good peer relations can be are necessary for normal social emotional development. So basically, how you work with kids during this time can be predictive of how you will work with your coworkers as an adult. And so this, basically, this is playing out through the entire lifespan. Is an example you may be aware of. Um, if you have bad group members, you know when you're doing school projects right now, do you think they're going to be good employees later on? Probably not. Probably the behavior that they have right now and group projects like this, it's exactly how they're going to be at uh, whatever job they go out to do. Related to this, peer relations is going to be play. And so the functions of play, basically it's what the child's job is. It's their work. When they go to school, play is part of their, basically their job. Um, it leads to possibly good peer interactions, working with other people, uh, can also lead to cognitive development. So being creative, working with others, doing the negotiation, figuring things out. Uh, can also help with language development, the idea of having conversations with other kids. So play, really helpful, really important. It can lead to, you know, being better down the road. Uh, the, one of the problems is that playtime, though, is currently on the decline. There's decline in the amount of free playtime experienced by a lot of kids right now in recent decades. I've mentioned this earlier, I think is in the last chapter, maybe two chapters ago, the idea that unsupervised playtime, uh, it was in the book Coddling of the American T Mind, Playtime, if it's structured and the adult is always there and you don't have the opportunity to figure things out yourself, it can lead to a lot of the problems that we've talked about down the road. Almost a form of helplessness that you expect someone to always be around there to take care of every little problem that you have. And it's not good. We think that, oh, okay, if there's always an adult there to supervise and to provide feedback, that it's always good. Not necessarily. There's sometimes the kids should be out there trying to figure things out on their own to foster those skills so when they become an adult that they can do that. And if you want to raise someone that is independent and not dependent, you want to try to provide them um, avenues to do that kind of stuff. The last, oh, there's a slide for that. Um, the last thing that the book talks about for this uh, time period and social emotional development is media and screen time. So think about this. How much screen time do you think they recommend for kids this age? You know, three, five, six, seven, somewhere in there. About one hour a day is all I think about. Is one hour a day is all they suggest for a kid to have. So think about this: the kids that you see, how often they're on screens. As a good example of this, we go to the zoo sometimes, and there will be kids that are sitting in these little uh, trailers, so wagons. And so the parent, and these are like kids that are six, seven, eight years old. They'll be in the wagons, and the parent carries them around the entire time, and they're sitting there with a tablet, watching the tablet the entire time. We're at the zoo where the animals are and these kids aren't paying attention at all to that and they're not even getting up and walking around. They're just staying in this wagon the entire time, staring at a screen. And it is bizarre when I see it. It looks like something out of a, a bad science fiction movie to see kids doing that. So yes, one hour a day is what they recommend for kids this age. You might also think about this uh, at an individual level. How, how many hours per day do you think you spend on a screen? There are some negative um, impacts from doing this. It creates passive learners. We've talked about several times. It is a homework distraction. There's all kinds of negative things. It can provide um, violent models of aggression, unrealistic views of the world. Again, reduced physical activity, so it can lead to being overweight, obese. It's going to affect your sleep habits. We talk about it, I think, in one of the later chapters, the idea of the blue lights coming through the screen. It affects your melatonin release, and it can lead to, there's a correlation at least, between a lot of screen time and higher rates of aggression because that's what you see on the screens. 
Higher screen time is also associated with a lower level of cognitive development. Although, in some of this research, I think they need to do a little bit better about dividing screen time up. So sometimes you can use screens for educational purposes. Like if you're watching this lecture, um, you know, it's being used for an educational purpose. So I think that that's different than if you're like playing some video game on your phone. And so sometimes the researchers don't seem to divvy that out very well. Also related to this, parental reduction in their own screen time was associated with a decrease in the child's screen time, which makes perfect sense. The idea of modeling. So if a parent is on their screen all day long and that's all they do is stare at a phone or you know a computer or whatever, that's what the kids are going to model. That's what the kids are going to do. And that's not just affecting their social emotional development. Again, if you're just sitting there on a screen, you're not conversing, you're not doing the free play time, you're not doing those kinds of things. Not only is it going to affect your social emotional development, it also affects the way your brains develop. During this time, your brain is still developing. Uh, your brain's developing actually throughout your entire lifespan, but it develops a lot more during this time. And so if you're on a screen the entire time, that's the synaptic pathways that you're building. You're just going to stare at a screen. You're not going to interact with other people. And it is going to have uh, negative repercussions. Maybe find some citations on this. Maybe post it next week. Also on this research, something to think about is this This research is fairly new. The idea that you know, cell phones are a little bit different. I talked a little bit about screens in another lecture. Phones are a little bit different in that they are always with us. They're ubiquitous. Um, like when I think I mentioned the Atari 2600, I didn't have the 2600 in my pocket. I couldn't take it everywhere. And every time I was slightly bored to pull out my phone and look at it. So the research on using these types of screen is fairly new and they are still figuring it out. If it's something you're interested in, there's definitely a lot of uh, research avenues and potentials that you could take with this kind of stuff. All right. I think that's it for chapter six. If you have any questions, head over to the discussions. And thank you very much for listening to this lecture.